video I want to show you about naming carboxylic acids and acid derivatives. Uh, by derivatives, I mean functional groups that look like carboxylic acids, but they are not exactly the same. All right. We've got our carboxylic acid here, and we're going to go through how to name that. It's pretty simple. It's very similar to what we've seen before. We've got two new functional groups, esters and amides. Now, esters, uh, you've seen these functional groups before. They're very similar to acids, except rather than the hydrogen coming off here, it's another carbon group. So you've got carbon groups coming off either side of here. For amides, uh, these are just like amines, except you have a carbonyl group there. So this is the amide. So notice all the thing that these all have in common is they all have carbonyl groups. What's different about them is what's coming off the carbon with a carbonyl. Here it's an OH, there it's an O carbon, and there it's a nitrogen group. All right. So let's start off with carboxylic acids. Let's start with these. Um, naming them is relatively simple. We use exactly the same naming rules as we did before. We use the suffix oic acid to indicate the name of an acid. So, for example, a three-carbon acid, three-carbon chain is propane. Lock off the E. The name becomes propanoic acid. All right. So, if you understand that, then you can see that hexanoic acid is, of course, six carbons. Now, notice for the hexanoic acid, there's no number locator for the acid. Now, the reason for that is the same as for aldehydes. When you look at the carbon here with the OH and the C double bond O, it's got four bonds to it, which means there can only be carbons coming off in one direction, which means the acid group is always on the end of the chain, same as for aldehydes. So although it's on carbon one, the fact it's an acid means you don't need to show that. So therefore, hexanoic acid, that means we've got six carbons, two, four, six, with the carboxylic acid on what we're going to define as carbon number one. All right? So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So if we just had hexanoic acid, it would be that. But we have something else. Coming off carbon two, we have an ethyl group. And we know what an ethyl group looks like. It's two carbons. We have here a substituent we haven't seen before. Hydroxy. This is similar to the term hydroxide. Hydroxy is an OH, so it's an alcohol shown as a substituent. And it's on carbon 3, so therefore our alcohol is right here. That's one substituent we haven't seen shown this way before. Um, in previous structures, we saw the OH have priority. Here it doesn't, because we've got the guy with the C that we want to know, which automatically gives it priority over everything else. So therefore, 2-ethyl, 3-hydroxy, hexanoic acid. And when we come down here, this is exactly the same thing, except now we've got 8 carbons. So if I draw our 8 carbons, 2, 4, 6, 8, we know because it's an acid, the acid group is going to be on the end. So I'm going to put it there. And then we just fill in what else we know. Well, 5-amino. Well, amino is a group we haven't seen before. Amino, however, should probably give you an idea what it sounds like amine. Amino is simply just an NH2 as a substituent, just like hydroxy is OH as a substituent. So it's important that you guys know these two. There are two new names for substituents. So we've seen things like ethyl and methyl and propyl and chloro and bromo and iodo and fluoro and all that stuff. And isopropyl, and now we have amino and hydroxy to add to that list. So if this is carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the amine group is coming off carbon 5. Coming off carbon 3 is a bromine, 1, 2, 3. And then coming off carbon 4 is our isopropyl group, exactly what we've seen before. So that is 5 amino, 3 bromo, 4 isopropyl octanoic acid. So let's go in from names to structures, but can we go the other way? Can we go from structures to names? Well, sure we can. There's no reason why not. So when we get a structure like this, same thing as we've done before. Count the longest carbon chain first. Four carbons. Therefore, I'm hoping you can see four carbon chain is butane. Lock off the E, stick oic acid on the end. That becomes butanoic acid. And then we just got to know the two substituents. We've got a methyl on carbon 2, a hydroxy on carbon 3. H comes before M, so therefore, 3 hydroxy, 2 methyl, butanoic acid. All right. Now, for this guy, 
there's less of an issue here because this is something that you all have seen before. Um, there are several groups we saw that changed the parent name of a benzene ring, and this is one of them. An acid group makes that benzoic acid. Benzoic acid. And then all you've got to know is what have we got here, and where is it relative to the acid? Well, we've got this on carbon 3, so either 3, whatever that is, or meta, whatever that is. So the question is, well, what is what that is, or whatever? This is a nitro group, so therefore 3 nitro benzoic acid or meta nitro benzoic acid. Oh, but nitro. That should be N for. Oh, sh um, meta nitro or 3 nitro benzoic acid. Right? So let's move on to esters. Esters are the most involved functional group to name simply because. You've got carbon groups on two sides of the molecule, therefore there's two parts to the, name, to the name of an ester. However, just as carboxylic acids have an ending, oic acid, esters have a name as well. O8. O-A-T-E. O8. That's the ending that signifies you have an ester. Therefore, we've got an ester here and an ester here. Notice we have parts of the name here part of the name here. When we look at this one in particular, notice we've got what appear to be two carbon chains, hexan O8 and butyl. Now, there's a reason for that, just as we have isopropyl and benzoate, all right? So let me just go through the theory of these really quickly, all right? For all, whenever you're naming esters, you always have what we'll call the carbonyl portion of the ester. I'll call this the acid portion of the ester, and then this is the alcohol portion of the ester. The acid is the one with the C double bond O, the alcohol is the one with the single bond O. And you cut right in the middle there, all right, and name essentially the two parts separately. But you always name one piece first. You always name the alcohol part first. Now, when we look at this part, all we're looking for is those two carbons bound to this oxygen, so therefore, how do I name this? I name this just as I would name a two-carbon substituent. You know a two-carbon substituent is ethyl. Therefore, that's how we name it. So here, butyl means a four-carbon substituent, isopropyl means a three-carbon substituent with the bond in the middle. But then we come to the second part, and this is what has the O8 on the end. So the acid part always has the O8 on the end. We have to ask ourselves, again, how many carbons here? Well, there's one, two carbons, just as there are two carbons here. All right? We, and so here's what I would do. Name the second part as if you are naming a carboxylic acid. All right? Now, a two-carbon carboxylic acid will be called ethanoic acid. But what we're doing is we are taking the oic acid from that and sticking O8 on the end. The other way to think about it is, if you just have ethane, lop off the E, stick O8 on the end, and that gives you your name. So think about it that way. Two carbons, ethane, lop off the E, stick O8 on the end, and that gives us ethyl ethanoate. And what this tells us is, first of all, there's an ester. In the acid portion, there's two carbons, and the alcohol portion, there's two carbons, and that's what you need to know. So when we look at this one, butyl hexanoate, let's look at that one first. Um, the way I usually uh, draw these out, draw the structures out, is I start off with the ester group, and then fill in everything either side of that ester. So I know I start off with my C double bond O, and then my oxygen, and I have something coming off each side, right? Now, we know according to these names, we always name the alcohol portion first. So, therefore, for each of these names, this is the alcohol portion. This is the portion that comes on the side with the single oxygen bond. Therefore, butyl means how many carbons? Well, of course, that means four. Four carbons. Just as for this guy, isopropyl means if this is the main part of my ester, then coming off here is my three carbons for my isopropyl. Right? Now, when we come down to here, uh, hexanoate, all right? Well, that looks like hexane, therefore six carbons. So I'm going to draw six carbons here. Two, four, two, four, six, all right? That is butyl hexanoate. Now, this guy is a little bit more 
involved. Um, but you can probably get an idea about what's going on by looking at these four letters. All right, benzoate. Now, what does that suggest to you? Well, it should suggest a benzene ring. All right. And so what you do is benzoate literally means there's a benzene ring here. That's all that means. So therefore, isopropyl benzoate is this. Butyl hexanoate is this. So the isopropyl is the alcohol part that gets named first. The benzoate is the acid portion that gets named second. The butyl is the alcohol part that gets named first. The hexanoate is the acid part that gets named second. Oh, you know what? I fucked up. Oh, sorry, I screwed up here. Dude, I didn't just say that, did I? No, I did. Never mind. Hexanoate. Now, that's six carbons. Now, let's be clear about this. Six carbons mean six carbons, including the carbonyl. Just as up here we named this as ethyl for two carbons, we have to make sure if we know this is hexanoate that we've got six carbons total. Five, six. So what I did originally do was seven carbons. That would have been heptanoate. But so this is hexanoate. Okay. Ask this. So let's do some more of this. Let's go from structures to names. Okay. So just remember when you have the structure of an ester, split it down the middle and say, I've got my alcohol part here, I've got my acid part here. So alcohol, ass, uh, id. All right. Alcohol, there's my the acid part, is my alcohol. All right. Let's do this one first. Alcohol part always comes first, remember. Two carbons is a two carbon substituent, ethyl. The number of carbons here is one, two, three, four. Four carbons is butane, therefore it's butanoate. Now when we come down here, one carbon substituent, so therefore methyl. I have a benzene ring here, so what we said was whenever you have a benzene ring coming off the carbonyl carbon, it becomes benzoate, therefore methyl benzoate. And that's how you name esters. Now for amides, um, it's actually not that dissimilar to amines, really. It's really quite similar. The main difference is the ending of your name is amide rather than amine. All right. So when we look at this guy, how many carbons are in the amide in the longest carbon chain? Well, it's two. All right. If, if we name this as an amine, it would be ethylamine. All right. Now, for amides, um, all you do is you take the name of the carbon chain, in this case, ethane, uh, lop off the E and stick amide on the end. So we have a bunch of syllables here, but what it ends up with is we took off the last E, so we get ethanamide or ethanamide, however you want to pronounce it. When we come down here, this is exactly the same thing, except now notice there's a methyl group coming off the end. We know how to name those. It's just N-methyl. Therefore, N-methyl, I'm just going to come down here to save a bit of space, N-methyl ethanamide. It's not a pronunciation class. I don't care how you pronounce it, as long as you can get the spelling right, sort of. Now, when we come over here, how many carbons in our longest carbon chain here? Well, of course, it's four. Therefore, the longest carbon chain is butane. Therefore, as an amide, it would be butane. Lop off the E. Oh, I didn't mean to write that E. Lop off the E and stick amide on the end, butane amide. Now, this is four carbons down here as well. So it's also going to be butane amide. However, we've got two methyl groups both coming off the end. So I'm hoping everybody can see N, N. Dimethyl butanamide. All right. All right. And that's it. That's how you name carboxylic acids and amides and esters. All right. You can see it's not really that bad.